Food and medicine from ancient America are one way of connecting the world to the people of the Book of Mormon. Let's start with the world's total production of cereals in 2020. It is more than two and a half billion tons, almost 1,000 pounds of cereals for every living person on the earth. Of that total, no other cereal contributes as much food value as corn. Corn accounts for 43% of the world's production of cereals, compared to wheat at 30% and rice at 20%. Let's also look at the world's total production of vegetables in 2020. The weight of all vegetables harvested this year on the earth is about 1 billion tons, almost 300 pounds for every living person. By weight, potatoes account for 35% of the world's total vegetables and tomatoes come in second at 17%. It is hard to understand, but we are very close to the mark when we say that half of all the cereals and vegetables consumed in the world originated from sources that the ancient people of America gave to the Europeans about three centuries ago. This is to say nothing about the cash crops that are based on original plants from America including cocoa and tobacco. No other group or civilization from history has had such an impact on the daily food of the world's population as the native peoples of America. These people were highly skilled in the development and cultivation of plants. Everyone must be thankful for his daily food. It is clear that half of what world eats today comes from plants that originated from the native peoples of America. What a profound thought. What a sense of gratitude. Every society needs food and medicine. The origins of half of the world's food are clearly from America. What about the impact of medicines from the same native peoples? Our pilgrim fathers quickly took corn from native peoples and planted it for themselves, chickens, pigs, and cows. Native medicines are another story. The medicines are from plants but require the skill and knowledge that come from generations of careful instruction and observation. The plants of medicine are associated with the land and the climate. The oral and written history of the displaced peoples during the mid-1800s tell that they regretted not just the loss of their lands to the European settlers but also the loss of the precious plants from which they obtained their medicines. Diseases from Europe like smallpox, measles, and influenza were responsible for tens of millions of deaths. Recent research suggests that as many as 90% of the 55 million native peoples living in the Americas at the time of Christopher Columbus' arrival died in subsequent generations as a result of their contact with the Europeans. Some of these deaths were from violence. Many more of these deaths were the result of sicknesses that the European intruders brought to the New World. It was a bad exchange. The native peoples gave us the sources of new foods that would feed half of the world's growing population. The Europeans introduced sickness and disease that nearly destroy the native populations. We are only now beginning to put the pieces together as we try to understand this history. How does all this relate to the discovery of the lost city of Zarahemla? Cities are the crown of any civilization. Cities require all the structures of power, order, knowledge, trade, and government that are common in our world. It is in cities where people are able to realize the economic advantages that come from the division of labor. One person becomes a mechanic. Another person becomes a teacher and a third person becomes a doctor. All learn to do their jobs and the whole city greatly benefits. So, it was with Zarahemla. There was a high order of specialization. There were people who took the time to learn the art of healing and how the essential oils of certain plants were beneficial for the good health and well-being of the citizens of the city. Healthcare then has now played a significant role in the economics of the city. The skill and knowledge of medicine were valued by everyone. The sources of medicines were derived from the distillation and concentrations of plant materials. It is very significant that for 2000 years one of the most powerful plants from the time of the Nephites has continued to grow exactly where they gathered to observe at least three times a year the feasts of Moses including Passover in the spring, Pentecost, Shavuot, in the early summer and tabernacles in the fall. As in all societies, good health, fellowship, and worship were very important parts of the proper order of the year. Dr. Kevin Price found the spotted bee balm, Monarda punctata, growing in the same place that it had grown when the Nephite society was at the peak of its civilization. The plant confirms that these ancient people were greatly aware of the powerful medicines that are found in essential oils for the curing of fevers and infections. This plant is a living artifact of a society rich in knowledge and tradition. The plant is the result of care and intelligence. It speaks to us from the dust to tell us that the people of the Book of Mormon were great and now are fallen. We are reminded of what Mormon before his death said. And my soul was rent with anguish, because of the slain of my people, and I cried, O ye fair ones, how could ye have departed from the ways of the Lord? 
O ye fair ones, how could ye have rejected that Jesus, who stood with open arms to receive you? Behold, if ye had not done this, ye would not have fallen. But behold, ye are fallen, and I mourn your loss. O ye fair sons and daughters, ye fathers and mothers, ye husbands and wives, ye fair ones, how is it that ye could have fallen? But behold, ye are gone, and my sorrows cannot bring your return. That great city of Zarahemla is clearly gone. But from the dust of the earth truth shall come before our very eyes. The restoration of one plant that has the potential of healing in our time is now before us. Let's make the right connection and bring that plant back from lost time from a people who were once favored by the Lord. Go to www.zarahemla.site to support the research that is needed to unveil the great city of Zarahemla. Please donate $10 per month so we can scan for the fire pits and post holes of the tens of thousands of people who were citizens of the lost city of Zarahemla.